Don't you just hate it when you've got too many choices of things to try and you just can't make a decision. Welcome back to Craft Computing. As always, I'm Jeff. Today we're taking a look at two different graphics card upgrade options for my average Steam user's PC over here on my left. First option is the GTX 1050 from MSI. This is the Gaming X Twin Frozer 6. It features 640 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1442 MHz, and 2GB of GDDR5 memory. It includes a set of red LEDs near the rear fan, as well as an illuminated logo on the side. Dual heat pipes aid with cooling, and the card is silent at idle as it disables fans when not under load. Representing the 1050Ti is EVGA's For the Win Edition. The differences include 768 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1379 MHz, as well as 4 GB of GDDR5. This card doesn't sport any LEDs on board, but it is very attractive in black and silver on the shroud. It would look good in nearly any build. With the MSI, you're pretty much stuck with red. Both of these cards represent the best version of each that you can buy. Typically a GTX 1050 or 1050 Ti would have a single fan on top of an aluminum heatsink, no heat pipes, and would rely on the PCI bus for power delivery, which is limited to 75 watts. Both of these cards feature dual fans and heatsinks that are well over spec for what's actually required of them. Power delivery is also improved with a 6-pin power connector on each card. That allows 150 watts. Now, you're not going to draw 150 watts, even when overclocked on these cards, but you're also not going to run into that 75 watt ceiling relying on the PCI bus. And as I said, both of these cards came at a premium. Typically, a 1050 would run you about $120. The MSI ran $145. The GTX 1050 Ti has been anywhere from $150 to $160 for that single fan design. The For the Win card, I picked up for $180. The goal of today's benchmark is to find out which, if either of these two cards, is going to make a good upgrade for my average Steam user's PC, which if you haven't seen, I'll link in a card right up here. After breaking down Steam Analytics, I discovered that the average user's PC was something around an i5-2500 quad core, not overclocked, 4GB of RAM, which I actually upgraded to 8GB to get all the games playable, as well as GPU power ranging from a GTX 750 Ti to a GTX 760. The 660 could also be included in that range. I wanted to keep today's test as fair as possible. Now, my GTX 760 is actually an EVGA Superclock card with an ACX cooler. That's actually why I went with the higher end versions of these cards to match thermal and overclockability. All cards are tested with the maximum overclock that I could get on them. So let's take a look at the benchmarks.
some pretty interesting results here. Now, honestly, I did not personally expect the GTX 1050 to beat the 760 in every single benchmark I ran. I expected this to be trading blows, but that's why we run the benchmarks. In my testing, the 1050 was between 4 and 25% faster than the GTX 760. Now, some of that may have been CPU limitations. I'll get to that in just a minute. The 1050 Ti was between 8 and 40% faster if I ignore the outlier of Doom, which ran almost three times as fast as the GTX 760. Now, I mentioned the potential for CPU limitations with this current setup. I did start to see that with the 1% and 0.1% lows in the open world games. That's Just Cause 3 and GTA 5. Between the 1050 and the 1050 Ti, those numbers actually leveled out. They did not increase when I went to the higher power graphics card. That means I'm bottlenecked somewhere else. I hate the term bottlenecked because it implies that the system doesn't perform well. The system performed just fine, but I'm being limited by the CPU when it comes to this graphics card. Titles that are much more GPU dependent, such as Doom, this actually blew the doors off of, and I didn't believe the benchmarks when I saw it. I thought there was something wrong with my methodology, and in fact, I retested it five times. That is a legitimate number. So what do I recommend you do if you're running a system very similar to this? If you're running a GTX 660 or 750 Ti, or something even earlier than that, I recommend you go with the 1050. I think it's a solid choice at $145, and in fact, if you don't mind a little bit more noise and a little bit more heat, you can go with the single fan card for about $120. If you have a GTX 760, I recommend you skip the 1050 entirely and go all the way to the 1050 Ti, maybe even a 1060 if your budget and your CPU can handle that. You're going to see much bigger performance gains, as well as the 4GB of video memory will make your system a little bit more future-proof. And do I recommend going with the premium versions of these two cards? I think for the $20 to $25 premium that was on top of them, absolutely. Although I like my systems very cool and very quiet. If you don't mind a little bit of extra noise and a little bit of extra thermals in your case, you could totally save the money. So what did you guys think of this video? Do you guys have an average PC with an average video card? And are you looking at upgrading to one of these? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this video. Next week, I'm gonna take you on a tour of my workstation back behind me. I promise you, the CPU choice I made in there will surprise you, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that one. And today looked like it was the last 90 degree day that we will see this year. So in celebration, I'm gonna finish my cider and get ready for fall beer season. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.